Chapter 3. The Previous Postulates. Einstein, by a stroke of genius, by a great intuition that is solemnly declares the variation of meters and times in a single direction of the universe. That is the story, or the principle, the fundamental part of his wonderful work. However, if we're going to think a little deeper, or to scrutinize one's own depth of the same arcane, then we only have the thought abstracted from the world of functions. In a word, an absurdity that nature cannot resist without breaking the infinite cosmos. This in a whim of genius, or rather, if you will, a need for talent, it seems like a subtlety to be able to go from those rotating movements, its classical example, to our gravity fields. It is unconceivable because good judgment and sound reason reject it, that science and the great institutions academic qualifications accept. Even if it is in principle the contradiction of an order of nature based on an incompatible application of the immutable laws that govern it in its infinite and eternal grandeur. The coefficient then that gives us the universal connection of the inexhaustible relations of nature have to look for it in its own place, that is, within the geometric of space as a static content of time. The experiments of Mickelson and Morley have not been sufficient to discover the supreme law of restricted or special relativism. Relativism. We must seek by other procedures and by means that are in better harmony with nature and its laws. The explanation of that interesting phenomenon that has transcended so much and so uselessly in the field of relativistic science. We must study non-interference, then, by the only resource we have left, by the gravitational actions of the Earth. Light, Einstein himself recognizes, is influenced by the statistically, by the statically centripetal directions of temporal space. It is that everything feathers and lead, matter and energy, is bound by the static of the great celestial concentrations. Nothing then, within our time and space, no mass can be exempt from our gravity. Light then, when it follows a direction parallel to the movement of the earth, will always be however, despite its own speed, a content of our field, a body that moves in our space. She is dragged through the field or terrestrial space. In the same field, in a single space, or in the same geometric continuity, the extensions, the extension in its two greatest aspects of energy and space, the difference in time always being proportional to the kinetic capacity, entail without a doubt a cosmic unevenness statistically statically manifested by centripetal acceleration as remaining inertia between both impulses, the positive and the negative. And so, by the way, these events of a pure geomet geometry of nature in all its magnitudes, from the infinitely small to the most sensitive, are so well suited to the electromagnetic phenomena with which it has been attempted to explain the great mystery of universal gravitation. There's only one geometry, the Pythagoric form of Gauss's means. Euclidean geometry, absolute space, is incompatible with sensible reality. Only time can resolve space continuum.